So, you know what? Maybe we just do need more fuel on that second stage, because that's that seems to be the problem area, from what I can see. It's just that it doesn't have enough fuel. Only, only by a little, but it, that's still a little that it's get, not getting enough fuel. <laughs> so... Now, this should work. This should work. It has more fuel. It's more weight, but... That was weird. It's more weight, but... The additional time the engine can go should overcome that and actually give us a net increase to our orbital speed, which is what we need to achieve warbat. Okay, let's go. Okay, let's throttle that down to a quarter and let these boosters do their work. This is the job they're made for. Actually getting us through the thick atmosphere. Let's actually get the references up to about 100,000, ideally. I mean, ideally would be more, but... Hey, after so much failure, I'm willing to take a 100,000 meter orbit. Now we're actually going to wait until we get up a little more, because the higher you are, it's basically kind of like a lever. The longer a lever you have, the more force you can exert on something. It's a similar concept. The higher your orbit, the more... Basically, the easier it is to make the orbit larger. It's an odd concept, but it is what it is. Okay. We're at a good height, I think, for us. Yeah, we're at 85,000. We'll start uh, improving the orbit again. And that stage is now out of view. And we'll see if this stage actually proves its worth. wait a little bit longer until we get up to closer to the apparapsis then we'll start burning again actually that is kind of a guide okay oh yeah we're gonna make it into orbit this time definitely by how much that's the question, but we are going to make it into orbit. So that's definitely a plus. Yep, see, we are now technically in orbit.
So, I'm just gonna actually go increase the orbit a little higher to around 200,000 meters. That's actually more than I expected I would be able to do. So I'm gonna be like that and once I'm around once I'm to that maneuver node, I am going to uh, even the orbit out a little bit, and then we're going to launch the satellite. Yay! We finally did it. I forget, is there... I feel like there's a warp to maneuver node button. Oh. There's a warp here. I don't know about the warp to maneuver node though. Okay, let's actually... Okay. Time warp complete. We're set on the maneuver node, and we're going to hit it in 10 seconds. We're not even going to need to burn for that long. Yep, 200,000, 200,000, they're about the same. But pretty much the same. I mean, a difference of like 2,500 meters. <laughs> that ain't bad in space. Okay. We did it. Hooray. Actually, no, no, no. No, I didn't mean to hit that. I'm actually going to wait until we get into the sunlight a little bit. So we can actually see what's going on. A little more easily. Okay. No, you don't. Now stop turning. You don't need to turn anymore. Although you do need to stabilize. Please fix that. There we go. Okay, we even have a little fuel to spare. Okay, so, extend solar panel. Extend solar panel. Where's the antenna? There. Extend antenna. Okay. Yay! <laughs> Finally. And this thing should be self-sufficient now. It's got battery power, it's got an antenna, it's got a computer command module, and it's got solar panels. Everything it needs. But with that said, Bada boom. Oh, that's gonna hit that. Only gently, though. <laughs> well, that was almost a debacle. But this thing, okay, you can actually, if you could actually stabilize, that'd be great. And I don't think it makes, hang on, which direction are you doing? I don't think it makes a difference, but I feel better with the antenna pointed at the planet, like that. And yeah, actually this thing, I don't have to have the SAS on, but you know what? No, I'll leave the SAS off. It doesn't need it. I can always 
come back to it if I need to stabilize it at some point. But now, it is time for Jeb to head home. And in order to do that, we simply need to go in the other direction. Bada boom. And it's much easier getting out of the orbit than it is getting into the orbit. Okay. I feel like that should be enough of a curve. You want to have a curve when coming down because of the... You want to have more time for the air to slow you down when you're entering the planet. Because if you were to just go like right in, you'd be going way too fast when you reach the ground. This way the air slows you down. But we did actually need that fuel. <laughs> All of that fuel. We only need a small bit. Anyways. Okay. We are now preparing to leave orbit. Alright, Jeb. Prepare for landing. Prepare for re entry first, though. Because, yeah. Re entry. Kind of a. kind of scary, like I said before. Okay. Okay, here we go. <laughs> yeah, you see, when you actually start hitting the air, you slow down really quickly. And that generates a lot of friction, which is why re-entry is kind of dangerous. Okay, what's overheating? What's overheating? Okay, just had to adjust the command module slightly. It was getting hit with a little bit of the heat. Okay, now the heat shield is taking it all. Boom. <laughs> that was, I think, the other part of my ship crashing. Because it didn't have a parachute. Okay, need to slow down a little more for the parachute to be safely deployed. Okay. And actually, I'm going to wait until I get a little closer to the ground. Just so I don't have to wait so long for the craft to land. We'll say 5,000 meters. It won't actually fully deploy until 2,000 meters because it's set to do that. Do that. Actually, 1,000 meters. Okay. But it is slowing us down a little bit, even when it's not fully deployed. Okay. And. 
time warp a little bit just closer and prepare for splashdown You made it, Jeb, and we got a satellite into orbit. <sighs> that took a while. Okay. I guess that does it for this goal. I'll see what goal I can come up with next. Maybe the moon.